Hello and welcome back to the studio here in Northumberland on a lovely, lovely sunny day outside. Um, but today I'm going to be working from the new book, which is Charles Evans' Watercolor Rescue, Top Tips. And basically it just tells you how to rectify mistakes that you've made in your paintings um, and also how to avoid them in the first place. So I'm just going to do a few bits and pieces from here just to clarify some of the things that I've been asked about, mainly uh, the, the big problems that people have. And it's this business about uh, watercolour pencils, because there's watercolour pencils in here as well as just watercolours. Uh, this business about watercolour pencils. How do I get like a, a rounded 3D look to a tree trunk? It's very easy in watercolour pencils. Well, it's easy, easy in, in just normal watercolours as well. But in pencils, it's even easier. Look, that's the thing I'm talking about. Get a, a rounded look to your tree trunk. Bit of a 3D effect to it. Very, very simple with pencils. Uh, just that for a second. And the pencils I'm using, Lyra watercolour pencils. That's the tin of 24, but we also do them in tins of 12. Uh, and what I'm using here, <coughs> I've got gold ochre, or golden ochre. I'll put my glasses on, then I can actually read what it says on the, on the can. <laughs> gold ochre. Yeah. And we'll just have, like I said, I've got loads of little bits and pieces of paper for this video today. Gold ochre, get your light on first. If I've got the light coming from the right, uh, from the left, I'll put this down the left hand side of the tree trunk. Now, a little bit of Van Dyke brown. Bit of that. Bit of this, bit of that, bit of the other. Let's colour it in. It's just colouring in like a kid's drawing is this. So that's gold ochre, Van Dyke brown. And now in the tin, there is a black, so I'll use it. A little bit of black down there. I don't often use black. It's a very handy colour in your watercolour pencils. And with watercolour pencils, if you want a stronger mark, a darker colour paint, press on harder. If you want a lighter colour, to whatever colour you're using, don't press on as hard. There, it just looks like a stick of rock. Three colours. Now, with my number eight round brush, all I'm doing is wet the, wet the pencil and merge the colours, soften them, so one colour is coming into the other. Look, you see how easy that is? That couldn't be simpler. And now you've got light, got light here, a mid-tone colour, and your dark, which I haven't wet properly yet. So, so simple. Now, because now that is just, yes, I started off with the pencil, but because now that is just wet paint on the paper, treat it like any other watercolour. Move it around a little bit. So, what I've got that going, I'll pull some bits out with the tip of my round brush, look. Number eight round brush. Aquafine, number eight. A few twigs here and there. A few more bits there. I'll a couple of bits over here. And look, I'm just picking paint up. Then put it back down. How easy can that be? There. That's one problem out of the book solved. So now, I've finished with the watercolour pencils for this book. I'm going just to my normal, traditional watercolours. Get rid of those for the time being, and now to my palette. Girls just said, shall I show them that palette close up because it's disgusting. There's nothing disgusting about that. It's vile. It's not vile. <laughs> that was the voice of she who shall be obeyed. <laughs> now, to the paint is another common problem. is mixing, mixing paints. Um, and the, the most common problem is that people say to me all over the country when I'm doing workshops is I can never get my paint the right consistency. You always get your paint stronger. I can't get mine that strong. 
That's because you mix in the way that you think you should, the ones that the experts tell you. I'm not an expert, by the way. You know what an expert is? An expert that has been the spurs a drip under pressure. And I'm not. So what you do, say, say for instance, I'm gonna mix Hooker's Green and Burnt Sienna. And I see it done every day in workshops. You start off with this. We'll have a load of water into the palette. Some people even have little sprayers that they bring. So once you've done that, and again, once you've done that, you then get your hooker's green. And then you water down your hooker's green because you don't you know, punch your water. Then you burnt sienna, you wash out your brush first, then you get your burnt sienna, and then you water that down. And what you end up with is that. And that. What I do is I get my hooker screen, then I get my burnt sienna, and then I water it down. And I end up with that. Same mix, just less water. If whatever colour you're going to mix were ready made for you in a tube, you wouldn't squeeze it out and then water it down five times, would you? No, you squeeze it out and water it down. So make the colour first, then water it down. Common sense really, isn't it? Whilst I'm on trees, I want to show you the same kind of thing, but just in watercolour paint. And I'm going to start off with a little bit of yellow ochre. And I'll do the same. The yellow ochre coming down there. Now again, a bit of raw umber this time, instead of, it was Van Dyke brown in the pencils, which is a really nice brown actually. This is just my raw umber. We'll put that down there. Whilst the yellow ochre is still wet, now look, you can see the yellow ochre running across, uh, sorry, you can see the brown running across into the yellow ochre. This time I'm gonna make my black. Ultramine blue and burnt sienna. There we go. Down that side. And again, the black is now running across into the other colours. Now, this is another problem solved out of the book. A lot of people say, it's dried too quickly on me and I've got hard edges between my colour. I can't get them to blend. You can see there, look. Very, very simple. And you can do this even when it's totally dry. Just with a clean, damp brush. Slow down. And help the colours merge. There. See? And then again, just like I did on that other one, because the paint's wet, pick it up, drag some out here and there. Have a few twigs. Another one there. Easy peasy. Another one, another, I'll turn the page in the book. And another one is, I can't, if, if you're doing skies, I can't get a perfect circle to represent the moon or the sun or whatever you're painting. It's so, so simple, it's just not true. And I've shown you things like this before in the tips and techniques videos, but it's all in this new book now. So I'll have a little bit of sky here and some green on it. <laughs> all part of the plan now. Right. Don't try and paint a circle um, by trying to paint with a brush a perfect circle because you don't want to manage it. A little bit of blue there, some more blue. Some more there. Some here. Now just gonna mop up along the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is get a piece of kitchen roll here.
fold it into quarters like so and get 10p. Now, I don't know which country you're watching this from, so it could be a dollar, I don't know, what is it? But there's my 10p. Press and hold on hard. And take it off. Magic. Magic! Golly gosh, it's the sky! <laughs> Have another one, but this time not. Keep your 10 piece. And you too can be a tight fisted artist just like me. And then that. This time we will have a bit of yellow ochre. A little bit of light red. And a little bit of blue with burnt sienna in it this time. Simples. Mop up. And it doesn't always have to be big one like that, you can have a 5p. Twist it. And press on hard. Don't jiggle it about, just press and hold it. Yeah. This time, a couple of clouds going through there. Right, so. Isn't that easy? Now, for another piece of paper, to get rid of that one. Like I say, this is a whole bits and pieces, lots of bits of paper. And the paper I'm using, obviously, is the Langton Rough, as normal. I always use it. I need to paint on both sides with this stuff. Lovely paper. Now, before we go any further, I just want to, with the book I'm talking about, actually, I'm going to turn it back on. Because another problem of the book is, a lot of people say a problem in the book that people worry about is rectifying, changing, taking paint out. And you think, in watercolour, it's got this reputation for being the most difficult medium. Therefore, if you do make a mistake, you can't, you can't change it. It's nonsense. Wash it out, take it out again. If I wanted more light, if I wanted to light in here now, wash out, squeeze, and bear in mind, look, this is totally dry now. Wash out, squeeze out. Go into the darkest spot, look. Take paint out. And again, go back in. Take out. You can always change things in watercolors. Look, I'm taking all of the dark out. There. Come on, Gail, get in on this bit. Come on, your fingers are in the way. You tell me I'm in the way? Mm -hmm. I'll move, shall I? Yep. We know what no one to paint then. <laughs> that is a problem. I love this thing about accents. I'm always taking the Mickey. Path, grass, path, grass, or a bath, both. Accents, I love them. And it's it's Gale. Uh, round here, Gale, in round here in Northumberland, Gale is not Gale. It's Gill. <laughs> <laughs> People say, All right, Gill, how you doing? Really weird, well, especially since the name Frida. <laughs> so, don't be shaking the camera. There, look, you see, you can just take it out. Change it totally. And you can go over there quite a few times as well. Now, to this one. 
And what I want to do is show you one of the big mistakes in these books. <laughs> I say big mistakes. Actually, I think they're actually titled in the book, are they? Yeah, I think so. Gales Fails. <laughs> or Gales Fails. <laughs> Gales Fails. And she doesn't paint this badly, really. Um, and she told me to say that before we started yes, filming. I did ask him to point this out. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, Gail, over the years, has been to loads and loads of different workshops up and down the country. And um, these are some of the things that she used to do, because these are the things that most people do when they're learning to paint. Uh, and I'm just going to show you the picture here when I can find it. Page 64. 64, ah. No, 65 actually. Okay. Oh yes, you're right. Uh, 64. 64, thank you. There. That's the Gales fail. And that's me putting it right. And all I've done, stage by stage, it's all in here, stage by stage throughout the book look, is showing you how to do these things stage by stage. So you can't really go wrong with them. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do this little section here with the tree, because the tree is important to people when you're painting, so I want to show you how to do it properly. With the tree, a bit of hedge, a couple of figures, a bit of a path. We'll just pull that little section out there. So, what I'm going to do now, start off with a bit of a tree here. Like so. Quick outline of a tree. It's a different tree to in the book. I just want to show you how to do a tree. Don't bother drawing foliage. You're going to paint it. We've got a bit of a hedge here, look. Like so. And some grasses, grasses next to the path. Oh my word. A bit more grass there. And we'll have the people about there. Now what most people do, let's do it up here. You make the heads too big. And they look like aliens. It's a little head. Yeah, like so. And a couple of sticks on the knees. There's a person there. And another one here. A bit taller. A couple of sticks on the knees. There you go. There's a couple of people. Simple. Or as I tell people, the easiest way to do people is YP. Look, I'll do it with a bit of paint so you can see it. Look, Y, P, full stop. That's the way to remember it. Your people, full stop. Letter P, color it in, and a Y, but exaggerate the length of the Y. Now, a very, very simple sky. Thank you, water there. This is a little vignette, not a vinaigrette, it's a vignette. Mm, vignette, big vinaigrette, I feel hungry. <laughs> You're always hungry. Bit of ultimate blue. Out, squeeze out. Let's have a couple of clouds there. No and 
And now, just let that dry a second. Only needs a couple of minutes, and then I'll carry on. Now, whilst that's still damp, I'm just going to drop in a few distant trees now. Just pop them in, and you can see that spreading and softening on the top. It's distant. Don't mess about with it, don't fiddle about with it, just drop a colour in. Distant woodland or whatever. Now, you can see that that paint is going into my tree trunk. Oh, my word! It's the end of the picture. It's ruined. No, it's not. Just take it out again. We'll just go through there around the people. Far away, distant trees. Wash out. Squeeze out. Just like I showed you in that tree trunk before. Take out. Mop up. Now it's dry enough. It's still a little bit damp, but it'll be fine. A little bit of yellow ochre, and I'm using my round brush. And on this one, I'm going to have the light coming from the right. Down there. Take the yellow ochre down there. And these paints I'm using, Aquafine paint. I mean, strictly speaking, they're students' quality paint. But Dale Rowney put natural pigment into them. They reformulated them a few years ago and put natural pigment into them. So they've got a real good strength and staying power. I think they're fabulous. And for one pound, one pound eight year tube, you can't go wrong with them. Bit of yellow ochre. Now, raw umber. And this again, this is about mixing with the browns. Again, it's a part within the book. There's my raw umber. There. If I wanted to make that darker, Put a touch of blue into it, and I've made that raw umber into sepia. See? Now, if I put a touch of burnt sienna into that sepia mix, and that's too much. Put a touch of burnt sienna into that sepia mix, and there I've got Van Dyke Brown. If I take my raw umber and burnt sienna, just the two, then I've got burnt umber. There. And whilst I've been talking, that yellow ochre is now dried. So I'm going to have to use another method of merging the colours, which I showed you earlier. It's coming down there, like so. A little bit here, don't need much. This is quite a big brush to be doing this with, but... It's got a nice fine tip to it, but also it's got a good broad stroke if you press on harder. If you want little twigs, I'm still with that brown mix. Go to my rigger brush, number four rigger. Rigger brush is a fabulous brush. Down here. And a little bit up here. I'm not fiddling about with twigs up in the top, because this is going to be in full foliage. Now again, make the black. What can mean blue? Burnt sienna. There. There you go. And you walk into that. And we'll have that coming down here on this left hand side. into the twigs. A bit more up here. I slipped with my hand then, that was a blob. <laughs> but I'm not bothered because it's going to be in full foliage. Now like I said, that yellow and raw umber hasn't quite merged enough for my liking. So, because it dried. So, 
back my round brush, just with a damp brush, clean damp brush, stroke over, merge, look, soften. Have you got that, girl? I've got that. I'm on it. <laughs> You're on it. <laughs> Now for the foliage in this lot, I'm going back to the book just to show you that. These are what I call lollipop trees. Sorry about that, yeah, but they are. That's true. Look, big blob on the top, twigs and the trunks are far too thick within. In fact, they're thicker at the top than they are at the bottom. Happy tree tapering gets more narrower as it goes further up. But lollipop trees, big clump of green. No light can get into that. Use your big brush. Don't start fiddling about with a little brush. I'm going to start off with a little bit of yellow ochre. Plenty of water there. And just with the side of the brush, look, tap on. But leave gaps. Let the light get in. Or as I always used to say, if you fill in all the gaps, the birds will break the necks if they try and fly through. <laughs> Put yellow ochre there. Now, Hooker's green and burnt sienna. A bit more burnt sienna. There we go. Plenty of water. And again, side of the big brush. Tap it. See? Leave a little bit of the yellow ochre on the top. On the tops of the clumps of green, I mean. Now, so a little bit of blue. It always sounds odd putting blue in your trees or your grasses, sorry, your grasses. Um, but it's not going to come out bright blue. All it's going to do is give a little bit more depth to the green. Pop it on here and there. Simple. What an easy tree. Much better than mine. Well, I should think so. I've been painting for 105 years. <laughs> now the hedge here, very, very simple. I'm going to darken the green a little bit more, put more burnt sienna to it. Yeah, nice, rich, dark green. There you go. Look. And if you want light in a picture, there's no finer white than the white of your paper. As it happens, I've got blue in there as well, because the sky came down to it. But leave the tops unpainted, look. Give a bit of light onto that. Put the hedge there. And coming around the other side of the people. Now, that's dry enough, it's to the people. And I'm just filling in my pencil marks. Simple as that. Incidentally, just off camera just then, Gail said, don't forget, don't forget to give me my 15 pence back. <laughs> God. Need it these days. Bit of that there. Bit there. Let's have some red. Bit of alizarin crimson. I'm just filling in the bigger block underneath. Like so. A bit of what colour shall I have on? Blue? Yep. He's got a blue jumper on. Not there. That's an hour on. Noticing with those trees yeah. too. Yeah. Bit of brown. Okay, brown then. Bit of raw, but just like you. There. That's all right. The canary yellow would have been nice. Well, he hasn't got canary yellow, okay. <laughs> Look, they're holding hands. Oh. Now, back to a bit of black. With more, actually, it's not black. I'm putting more blue into the mix. It's a very, very dark blue. No, so, and again, it's all with the tip of my number eight round brushes. Now, 
a little on that. Got a wobbly leg. Now, bit of shadow in between. A couple of people, simple as that. I've got back to my three quarter inch flat brush now, and I've got just a little bit of sand there. Shells in sand. Useful for lots of things now. I'm just going to use it for my trap. And up to the people, around the people there. And take that off into the distance. Call another big brush up. Three quarter inch wash brush, very handy brush. I use them for lots and lots of things. Take out a little bit of light on that. Just clean that brush again. And now a different green, but still from the hooker screen. Here's my hooker screen. But this time, a lot of yellow ochre into it. See? Different green, that one. There's lots of different greens you can get from hooker's green and mixing other color, all your other colors into it. See, lighter green, nice. Bit there, coming up to there like so. Bit behind those two. Bit in the middle. Not simple. Bit there. If I wanted grass, sorry, grass, push the brush in, flick up, up. grass. Now we just need a little bit of shadow to finish that off and the shadow always makes a big difference to everything whether you're painting landscapes or buildings or whatever stick shadow it makes a difference just let that dry for a second now to finish this off just a bit of shadow look and this is a strange mix ultramarine blue a little and crimson well, i've made a really awful purple then tone it back with burnt sienna. Now, I'm saying ultramarine blue. What I mean is the blue of your sky. If I'd use cobalt blue for that sky, for this picture, it would mean that I'd be using cobalt blue, alizarin, crimson, burnt sienna. So, touch the tree with it because it's in the tree there, look. Just touching the tree with it there and bring it down to the ground and bring it across. Now don't forget the people. But a shadow ties them down to the ground. And a bit of the edge here. Where the grass meets the path. And there we go. Ding dong, a little landscape. I'm just I'm just looking through the book now, and there's one in with bolts in as well, um, and that's the the original that I did. Not a very good shot from here, but there we go. Uh, and here's Gail's fail. Well, I did my best. You did your best. I did my best, and that's the better one again. Yeah. I mean, bolts are supposed to be really difficult, and they're not. Um, I'll just do a quick, you know this really um, difficult angle of a bolt where it's kind of like coming towards you but slightly on an angle, you know what I mean. Lots of people have a problem with that. So, so simple. You know the old fish that you see on the back of uh, cars, the old Christian symbol? There you go. Look. The fish. Once you've got that, 
All you need is a stick there. Another one there. One there. And a boat. Easy as that. Anyway, I digress. Um, the thing is, with the book, it's showing you how to rectify mistakes in watercolour, which a lot of people don't think you can do. But believe me, I've been doing it for centuries. Yes, you can. Uh, and the other thing is, it also teaches you how to not make those mistakes in the first place. Another good book for that is the tips and techniques. Uh, top tips, sorry. And we, Charlie's top tips. There's loads of stuff in there. People keep this in their paint box all the time. A bit like a little reference point that's in their box, their paint box all the time. And so if they've got a problem with something, they just refer to that. It's such a useful little bit. And what we do on the website, charlesandart.com, is sell them both together. I think it's 15 pounds of it, for yep. both of them. Yep. 15 pounds for both of them, we call it double help. <laughs> but the brushes I've just used throughout this painting are Aquafine brushes. Everything I use is Dale Rowney, always. Uh, one and a half inch flat, which I haven't used today, but it's there. Three quarter inch flat, number eight round, and a number four rigger. Aquafine brushes. They're brilliant brushes, they'll hold so much water. But as you can see, they're soft enough to take out as well. And also, there, you can really abuse them because it's a good bristle. Love them. And the paints I've just used here are, again, Aquafine paints. There we go. These, I think, are one, are these one pound each? Yeah. One pound each a tube on the website, gelsandart.com. Aquafine paints, fabulous things. And the paper, the Langton Rust. We sell it in A3 and A4 sizes. I get big sheets that I just chop up, but it's the same paper. And the line of pencils, again, that's a tin of 12. So if you don't want lots, just get a tin of 12. But we've also got tins of 24, which is what I'm using today. And the Charles Evans Sam. An invaluable little tube of paint, good for as you see me use it today. It's a good layering colour, you put that down then put all the colours on top of it. Um, stonework, really good for stonework. Flesh tone, you know how flesh tone is really difficult to mix in watercolours. Sand, a touch of light red, your flesh tone, easier. Add a little bit of blue if you want to darken it slightly. So that's it really. Hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you again soon. Take care, bye bye.